Good morning, everybody. Slinging the Biscuit, episode 28. Trevor Oilers, Pat Shea, we are joining you on our podcast for this week as always. Uh, I'm coming to you from Ellsberg, Sweden, on the west coast of Sweden. Pat Shea is coming from his home, his beautiful home, his residence in Massachusetts. Yes. It's gorgeous. It's a gorgeous home. And I was just, I'm <laughs> fresh off a Trav for Oilers premiere on uh, YouTube. Yeah, you came to your it first was, one? Yeah, that was my, I, I think the first one I was least active in their chat, man. It was, it was thrilling. The, the guys, the passion of your followers, um, which we talked about too recently about the passionate uh, following you have, like the comments, the consistent viewers right off the bat, like the the likes, you know, they're, they're there and they're feeling it. Um, as I searched your, your name and I was in your premiere, then I also, I scrolled down like a couple of so I'm like, oh, what's going on with, with Trav these days? I came upon this video, dude. Of Kitchen Hero, <laughs> and I don't know if Trav's. I'm sure. Well, it has four thousand views, so I'm sure a few of your followers have seen it. But, dude, I, I reposted I actually, the video. I reposted. You did? I, I I featured him in a video, and I reposted a couple months ago. It was great. It was hilarious. Dude, I was cracking up the part where he he sits down and he's like, well, he says it a couple of times. Where he's like, yeah, you know, I was at a lean two hundred eight, and now I'm sitting at you know two hundred eighty five pounds. When I came back from Sweden. It was closer to 288. Yeah, as you can see, uh, it's been tough. You know, when I do the RVH, the VH, everything else, I just dig in the ice so deep that I'm hitting the, the coolant lines, and that's not a good thing. Um, I've got eight weeks until training camp starts. Um, I got to lose give or take 60, 65 pounds. So I figure eight pounds a week, eight to 10 pounds a week should be doable. Um, currently, I'm at roughly 6,500 to 7,000 calories a day. But if I bump that down to about 2,500, um, doing the math, that should equal about 60, 65 pounds in about eight weeks. I'm gonna be dropping my Traspec Pro Laces number three. We're gonna skip over number two, go number three, and you will not believe the technology we have for you. Also, Blue Shed, I did a great job training today. So me and him are gonna go out, cruise the town, look for some Brampton dirties. So catch me next time. I'm trying to cut 65 in the next eight weeks, so if that averages out, and he was like adding the math up. That was that was actually intelligent. That was like very smart comedy. That was funny. Dude, you know what? He reached out to me and he messaged me uh, before he he did the video. He's like, "Hey, man, I just wanted to reach out and just get your blessing to do it. I don't want to offend you or anything." I'm like, "Buddy, uh, offend me? Are you kidding me, dude? I will be honored if you did this for me. I would be do privileged." It I, that's, that's what I told him. And, you know, we kind of talked about, like, what whatever he was going to do and whatever he wanted to hit. I was so disappointed that he, he nailed this 10-star video making fun of me, but the camera wasn't in focus the entire time. No, yeah. I, I was thinking that, too. I was like, dude, if you just put, like, better quality or focus the camera, he could he should start just making fun of people. Mm -hmm. like, mm -hmm. it, any it was any great. YouTuber, any whatever. Like, think about it. I mean, you got 4,000 on a trap for Oilers. Like, what if you get banged out a Logan Paul and he thought it was funny? Yeah, like somebody who actually has an influence in the online community. Yeah, outside the hockey, the hockey world. Dude, my, my favorite part was, was just like the, the little indie, like idiosyncrasies like that I do that he was picking up on. Mm -hmm. like, like he was so dead serious. He's like, yeah, yeah, you know, you know, I'm on my two eighty five right now. You know, I'm gonna chop down to about two oh eight, but I got Booge helping me out here. He support me. You know, I think we got about uh, you know eight weeks until the start of the camp and start of the season. I think uh, you know cut out about uh, you know fifteen pounds a week. I think we should do it. Um, you know, I'm looking lean. I'm looking mean. I'm feeling fast. I'm ready to go overseas for a you know great season over in Europe and uh, you know uh, prove some people wrong. As he's got like all the booze, the Doritos, yeah. the chocolate milk, the pepperoni sticks on the kitchen table. <laughs> His before and after of him wearing the jersey. <laughs> this yeah. is what it looked like before. Now after Sweden, <laughs> he's 285. He says, and he's like, yeah, I was eating uh, 6,500 calories. I think if I cut it down to like 2,500, that will equal out to like eight pounds a week. <laughs> Dude, he was and he was so serious the whole time. Oh, it was perfect. Dude, dude, he was dead serious. He's dead awesome. serious, dude. Oh, he he did a great. You know, he actually he messaged me. I think about a month, month and a half ago. He wanted to do a second version. He's like, "Hey, man, the last version was so successful. Like, thanks for reposting it. Can I do a second version?" I'm like, "Yeah, absolutely." And I, I haven't heard back from him, but he said he was going to do a second one. So I I hope he does a second one. I'm looking forward to it. But um, <laughs> um, where where do we even pick up from that one? Where where do we go from there? Uh, well, actually, I have a question. Do you find success in your premieres rather than just dropping the video? More yeah, success? you know, 
you know, I think that's part of like what you and I talk about is like getting that dedicated audience. Like you, like Pat and I talk on FaceTime a lot about like, like the people that follow what I do and follow my stuff. Like they are like religious, like a cult. Like mm-hmm. if you attack me, they will show up at your doorstep with pitchforks and knives and bombs and they will, yeah. they will like, like Cascasua last week. I just said in the, you know, the video in the Q and A that I wasn't a fan of him and we'll get into it this week. People were coming after his wife and his kids, and I'm or Ooh. his kid, and I'm like, can can we just have a little bit of respect here? I, I get it. People like the videos. People get a little bit heated and passionate, but let's leave the wife and the kids out. So, it's it's good that you know people are super passionate about like what I'm posting. Maybe a little bit too much, yeah. um, but I th- I think the premieres and replying to every single comment for the last year, every single comment ever posted, I've replied mm-hmm. to everyone and gave everybody a personalized rep- reply to try to build that personal relationship. I think that is why. Uh, people are so crazy, like the ones that like follow me, in, in my honest opinion. And I love it to, to the people listening to the podcast that are crazy. I love you. Like, let's keep it going. Let's let's take it up a notch here, right? Hell yeah, guys! Just don't attack his kid. <laughs> yeah, let, let's not burn anything down. Let's not you know assault people. Let's let's be respectful about it. We yeah, can have yeah. an opinion, but let's leave All the wives and games. the kids out of this. Yeah, come on. <laughs> um, we should uh, we should transition. And tell you about something awesome, okay? Halloween, pumpkin carving season, acorn squash, Ooh. butternut squash. Guess what? Let me tell you. If you got a hairy butternut squash, if you're listening to the video yeah. or you're watching the video version, you're listening to the podcast, let me tell you. A hairy acorn, a hairy, hairy butternut, it ain't going to get the job done, my friend. It really isn't. That's why I got to get Manscaped. Shave with the best. Pat, tell me a little bit about it. I'll show you. Shave your butternuts for Halloween. That's a good reference, you know, butter up you, in, you, in a way the sh- you don't need shaving. You don't need the butter like because it's, it's all in one. Like naturally the shaving cream would be the butter and then the nuts would be the nut, the butter nut. But in this case, you don't need shaving cream. You just take the manscape and you just smooth out the pumpkin, the pumpkins or pumpkin for some people. God bless. But. <laughs> if you, you just, have multiple pumpkins down there you may you may need like yeah. six of these yeah yeah just, just the battery just is not smooth, gonna... it's just smooth out your your pumpkins your pumpkin how many however many you have it, it creates a better halloween creates a better you know a sex life a better personal life happiness overall for me at least you know it's not guaranteed that way but i'm feeling good i'm feeling fresh i'm feeling lean long rangey dangerous with every hand a lean and, uh, 285, baby, ready yeah, for the start of camp. Lean 285. <laughs> but uh, if you guys want to help us out with the podcast, you know, we're, we're building this up while we're also vlogging and playing hockey. It's It can be a bit of a grind. We're just, you know, trying to help you guys, entertain you guys. If you want to help us out to keep this podcast going, pick up a, a lawnmower with the code BizKit. It gets you 25% off or 20 Twenty percent. So here's the deal, folks. You're gonna get the lawnmower, and you don't get just the lawnmower. You get the performance package. So you get the lawnmower. You get the anti-chafing ball cream. I'm, I'm gonna tell you a real quick thing here, Pat. One of the boys in our team, he sits beside me in the locker room. Great kid, Max. I told him I'm gonna get you a performance package because he's got a little bit of hair. You know, he's 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 having a kid in uh, two months, so he's gonna be going through a really tough patch. You know, with adulting or adjusting to fatherhood. So I said I'm gonna get you the lawnmower and everything because you're gonna need it. And I told them that you get the anti-chafing ball cream, you get the toner, so your balls smell nice. You get the lawnmower, the weed whacker, right for your nose and your ear hair, all that stuff. You get the shirt, the underwear, the bath mat, the travel bag. And he was like, "I get all of that, or just like a couple?" No, you get all of it. Hold like it. It's thing. one thing. Yeah, all of it. But see, here's the thing: you're gonna get it, twenty percent off with the promo code Biscuit. You're gonna get free shipping. Shipping's on Pat and I. Pat and I will cover the shipping. You get twenty percent off. And it's free shipping worldwide. It doesn't matter where in the world you chime in from. You want to come from St. Petersburg in Russia. You want to come from Jasper, Alberta, Canada. You want to come from Eldsburga, Sweden. We got you covered. The shipping is covered, and we're going to be good to go. Another thing I wanted to point out, Pat told me this the other day over FaceTime, why he loves the lawnmower, is that it's quick. Okay? Mm. So late at night, you're in you're in a rush. Something pops up. You, know, you, you end up making a late-night rendezvous. You don't need shaving cream. Maybe you're out of shaving cream. All you need is the lawnmower. You got yes. 90 minutes of battery life. If you're Italian, you buy two because you're going to need a full 180. <laughs> Trust me. And if, like Pat said, you got a couple pumpkins down there, get three. You'll cover all of them. You'll have, you'll never run out of battery life, especially if you've got three pumpkins. Yeah. We want to thank Manscaped as always for sponsoring the podcast. Dom, God bless your soul. God bless Pat for being the good-looking stud that keeps his podcast and the ship afloat. And uh, like Pat said, you like the podcast, you want to support it, 
pick up a lawnmower and we're not going to charge you for a podcast appearance. We're just going to give you a great shave and a great trim trim, and some great anti-shave and ball cream from manscaped.com. Got to love it. Got to love, uh, love it, baby. On the on the topic of shaving balls, <laughs> you know, <laughs> I feel like it's a, I don't know, for me at least, like it could be a relatable thing. It's like, yep. you kind of, you get a little lazy, you go like a few days, maybe a week, you know, no shave. And then you're just kind of like, oh shit. Like when, right when you were going to hang out with a girl, you're like, shit, mm-hmm. forgot to shave my balls. Like I've actually legitimately took in the lawnmower like last minute and like ran to the bathroom and like you just have it like in the glove box or your car at all times it really quick and like ran it like fuck it is quick and it it gets the job done fast so that's that's personal experience you know you know be funny if you're on like a a date you go like pick her up and like you know your ram 1500 or whatever you know you go to pick up some nice food you go to the movie theater you know you're watching the sunset and you're like uh Come here, baby. Just open up the console for a second. And she opens up the console because she thinks she's getting something out. And boom, the lawnmower Lawn is mower. in the console. She knows that you're taking care of. Wouldn't that be awesome? It's also right? good because if you're having car sex and then all of a sudden you're going in and you see hers and you're like, you just like play like, hold on, I got something for you. All of a sudden she sees a light coming in, then like a zzz, and you just shave her quick. And then everyone's happy. You know, here's Perfect. a new jingle for the ladies. Listen, you're a little furry. I'm in no hurry. <laughs> we're good That's to go great. also to clarify because my, my dad keeps asking the lawnmower is for your beard for your ass for your balls for your face for men Everywhere. and or women your hands landscape, anything, anything if you're a hairy you ape hairy like hands. pat yeah, yeah pat's a hairy <laughs> ape man you you got if you're like me and you're not as hairy no matter what you're good like listen i can go like three months without recharging this thing like i'm not a hairy dude by any means but pat he's got to recharge that thing bi-weekly so yeah I'm a bit hairy. um yeah so we're we're, we're rolling Speaking of my dad. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, no, no. Go ahead with your story. What's, um, what's Pops up to? Yes. Yes. So uh, uh, with the whole Dodd the Bounty Hunter thing that we, we keep talking about. Yeah. So did I, did I tell you I picked up a couple seasons of Dodd the Bounty Hunter on DVD on Amazon or no? Like just the other day? Yes, I did. I ordered it on Amazon. <laughs> dude, shipped it right to my... back uh, in a big way. Oh, dude. Dude, stocks for Dodd the Bounty Hunter have gone through the roof since he tried to hunt down this Brian oh, yeah. Laundry kid. And uh, you know... Like, it, you know as I get older, and I, I think some people listen to the podcast may relate. If you're a younger kid, I'm going to sound like some old man, like, listen to me, kid. I'll tell you how things are. Like, as you get older, you start to appreciate your parents. Like, both my mom and my dad, I get it. Like, they're up there in age. Or like, I'm, I'm 25. My mom is, um, what the hell is my mom? My mom's like 60. She's 60. Yeah, she's like 60 or some shit like that. And then my dad is, some uh, shit. my dad is whatever I am plus 40. So 65. So my dad's 65. So they're both getting up there in age. And you start to realize, like, there ain't a lot of time. Like, like you never know. God forbid, my dad could have a jammer in the parking lot somewhere, like a you know blockbuster in AW. If there are any blockbusters left in Canada, I don't think there are, but it could happen. Or my mom could be hit by a bus tomorrow. You never know. So I've I've always just tried to embrace, like, more so recently, is like, I want to try to spend as much quality time as I can. And my dad and I used to always watch Dog the Bounty Hunter on TV as a kid, like, you know, like 10, 15 years ago. So I started talking to my dad about Dog the Bounty Hunter, trying to find Brian Laundrie. And I said, you know what, Dad, you still have that DVD player? He's like, DVD player? I got seven. I got seven over my place. I said, well, you know what? I'm going to pick up seasons two, three, and four on DVD, Dog the Bounty Hunter, every episode from those seasons. I'm going to buy them. And when I come home, we're going to watch all three seasons. So um, I picked him up. I got him for like 30 bucks, uh, like three seasons of Dog the Bounty Hunter. So smoking deal. money. Yeah, easy money, and uh, got to uh, now I get to spend some awesome time with my dad. So, is there something wrong with season one? Not as good. Uh, Out of stock. Out of stock. Yeah, yeah. It was hot. It was hot, dude. Do you care if I join you? You know, I'll just I'll just like hop and I'll I'll hop in the middle. (laughs) (laughs) You you, you know what? It's like. It's like when I try to FaceTime you for the Jake Paul fight because you paid for the pay-per-view and I don't want to pay for it. I'm like, I just just FaceTime me. I'll watch. And Pat's like with a girl. I'm like, oh, yeah, it, does, it doesn't matter. Just set me up on the side of the coffee table and I'll watch. <laughs> All of a sudden you hear some ruffling going on while, I'm, while the fight's going on. You're like, whoa, did someone get knocked out? No, 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 no. <laughs> Pat, can you mute me for a sec? Thank you. She, she likes getting spanked. That's all that is. That's not Jake. <laughs> oh, yeah, you like that? Uh, Pat, can you turn the volume off? I just want to watch the fight now for the next like six oh, minutes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. Um, uh, speaking, of, speaking of women, I had a funny interaction with a, with a woman or girl. I, I think she was like my age, our age. Yep. Um, I was going through the McDonald's 
line last night on the way to the, on way to the movies. You know, naturally you pick up some McDonald's on the way, a little snack. Yep. And I pull in the the parking lot, whatever, and there's like a car like weirdly placed and like parked kind of like not really going to the drive through, but also not parked. He was just there, so I was kind of like, "What's going on?" So I was kind of going slow. Is he going in line? Is he not going in line? You know, type thing. All of a sudden, mm-hmm. this like car is like beeping behind me. Like he's honking he at kept you. Beeping, and I'm like, but like I was in the parking lot. It's not like she was in the road. And I'm like, is she beeping at this car? Because the car was weirdly placed. I could maybe I'm like maybe that's what's happening. Then that car left, and she kept beeping, like just kept beeping. So I'm like stopping every time she beeps. So it's like defeating. If she wanted me to move, off, I was confused. So every time she beeped, I would stop and be like, "What's going on?" So then she keeps beeping. I'm like, "Oh, she is beeping at me." So I like stop the car and I roll the window down. I'm like, "What?" And she's like, <laughs> she's like, she's like, "Drive? Why? Can you drive or something?" I was like, "No." She's like, "What?" And then she's like, "Why not?" I'm like, "My my calves hurt. I can't I can't step on the gas." And she's like, what? I'm like, shut the fuck up. <laughs> and so I tell her, I literally just like, I go, shut up. And then she like got all like upset. And she's like, you, you shut up. And I got like sad at me. I was like, now I'm not driving. Now I'm not going forward. Not until you ask nicely. I'm and turning I, like, the vehicle off. I'm just and I waited like my another like on. two minutes to piss her off and like slowly inch forward. And I just kept fucking with her until like, but the thing was, Yes, no one was at the drive through line, but there was like four cars, so we weren't going anywhere, you know? I'm like, mm-hmm. what is this lady so passionate about that she's in such a rush to get in the fucking McDonald's line? People get so passionate about McDonald's. Dude, people it's do some weird. crazy shit for, for like a value picks menu cheeseburger. I, so I know weird. I wouldn't. There was so much energy. Yeah, dude, I don't know if I'd honk at you. I'd probably just back up and walk in and like walk in like a regular <laughs> civilized person, but like uh-huh. people are passionate, dude. Like, it's crazy. You know, it's like you know a Trav for mean? Oilers fan in McDonald's equivalent. <laughs> and uh, ironically speak, I, I just ironically, um, I lost my virginity at that McDonald's at that same moment. Oh, yeah, oh. In, the, in the parking lot right off oh. to the side. So, you know, I was going a little slow because I was remembering the old days, you know, like, ah, uh, first I time remember. I had car sex right there. I remember that handicap parking then I'm hit, heard, Then I'm just hit, hearing a bunch of beeps, you know, beep, beep. And I'm like, oh, yes. That sounds just how she squeaked, you know? Like, that was her sound. <laughs> that was how she sounded, too. Oh, man. <laughs> then I'm hey, like, oh, let... shit, someone's beeping at me, and I'm, like, fully torqued at the same time. And I'm like, what? What? But I got a question you know? for you, though. Yeah. So you're, you're, in, you're in the parking lot or, or whatever. Yeah. You're, you're having your, your first endeavor. Yeah. She pulls off your underwear. Does she make a comment about how they're fitted and how they feel? She did actually, because she was she like, did? "This, this is the first time that she saw a pouch, a pouch for your balls and your mm-hmm. dick, and really, one pair of underwear, and it was super comfortable, super comfortable." Tell me more. Well, have you never had those underwear? I, I have, but I'm curious to learn more because that's why Sheath is our next sponsor. We want to tell you about. Yes, and it and it created a nice comfort for me to go out there and lose my virginity. And I, and I was like, you know, you, you, if you're too tight in your underwear, you're going to lose circulation. You're going to lose the airflow. Mm-hmm. It's going to, you might not work. It might not work. You might get a little, little uh, stage fright. But when you have the comfort of sheath underwear, it's a beautiful thing. What you can do, the energy you feel like you have, it's, re, it's rejuvenating. Is that the correct word? Yeah. And you know, when you compare them to like your modern day, like your typical boxer briefs, and your tidy whities right? All that like Joe Boxer kind yeah. of stuff. It's amazing how restricting they can be. And also like, you, you know that pair of gits you've had for like 10 years? And I, and I know I've had these. I'm sure you have. We've had them for 10 years and you put them on, you stretch the waistband and it doesn't spring back, right? Yeah. Those ones. This isn't sheath. Sheath is not that. No. So sheath, what's awesome about sheath is that they have the part, the pouch compartments. So you have one spot for your Jimmy, one you know, for your peach basket. I think I can say that without offending people. So everything's kind of compartmentalized, which is awesome. I also got some incredibly smooth, comfortable materials. So I got a pair right here, right? The materials are awesome. These are freshly washed, same as last week. And I got the pouch. I don't know if you can see in the video version, right here, right here. So you got a little yes, bit of everything sir. in there. You can fit everybody in their different compartments and they're cool. They breathe nicely. I'm wearing the shirt as well. The shirt is made from awesome materials as well. And here's the thing. If you're working out, 
especially if you're out and about in summertime. I know we're getting into fall, but it's still at that time of year where it's like winter at night. It's like spring in the morning. It's summer weather in the, yeah, in the, like in the afternoon and it's hot. And then it's it cold again at night. So if you're wearing sheath underwear, everything's going to breathe. Everything's going to keep you cool. And it's, it really is. I mean, like, everybody needs underwear, right? Like, come Christmas time. Oh, yeah. You do. Right? My, yeah, my dad always, my, even my mom, like, they both buy me underwear. They buy me socks. Everybody needs it at some point. So if you're going to buy underwear, don't go spending five bucks on, you know, a pair that's going to, like, that waistband that's, that's going to stretch out and not come back. We don't need that. So instead, no. put some money into some good underwear. It's going to last you a while. It's going to be durable. You're going to be comfortable. And you're actually going to notice a difference, which is which is why we partnered with Sheath. And Sheath yes. has been awesome. So you're going to go to sheathunderwear.com. You're going to use the promo code BISCUIT69. Exactly what Pat was doing in the McDonald's parking lot. And it's the amount of pairs of underwear that he ordered. And you're going to get 20% off. You get some amazing underwear. It's going to last you a while. And your lady's going to be really happy. You're going to be comfortable. You're going to be free. You're going to be light. And some of the best underwear that you can get, if not the best underwear on the market. So... I'm sure, I mean, you could have like solid gold underwear, which would be even better, but then you could sell it and buy more pairs of sheath underwear. So there's a, a business idea. You get one pair of solid gold, sell them, buy some more sheath. So thanks to Sheath for sponsoring us. Robert, thank you for uh, giving us an opportunity to work with Sheath and uh, represent them on the podcast. So it's uh, always exciting when we get to work with awesome companies like Sheath. Uh, we were speaking of hockey communities. I had a funny little hockey oh, community this. moment. Yes. <laughs> I had a, so I'm on TikTok or IG Reels, I forget, and I hear this sound of an Iris cover. You know that mm -hmm. song? Yep, yep. It's a great tune. And the cover was just, it was good. It was very, this guy was passionate. And I'm like, this is really cool, so I'm going to YouTube it naturally. And there's a full version, sure enough. If you guys want to listen to it, Matt Hansen has already a million views, but if you want to listen to it, it's a jam of a, it's a, jam of a cover. Uh, <laughs> as I'm just like jamming to the song, I see the top... Um, you know, it like kind of shows, but he doesn't, you don't see a name. You just see the logo or whatever. Yep. I'm like, oh, it's, this guy says, unbelievable. That could be the hardest song to cover and do it justice. And you mm -hmm. did that and then some. Well done. And I'm just reading. I'm like, wow, people really like that cover. That's pretty cool. And then like, I click down and I'm like, oh, F Pavel Barber. That was Pavel Barber's comment. Brand and people Barber. were loving it. It got a thousand, <laughs> over a thousand likes. Uh, reply from him he was just pumped and people are like what the hell my two worlds coming together i'm cracking up i'm like pavel why is pavel barber also jamming out to this iris song and why is he commenting it just made me laugh i sent it to trav trav yeah. <laughs> trav had his uh i had a heyday yeah you had, I had a, a, heyday I had a field day with that dude <laughs> i'm telling you man this guy i bet you this guy eats bologna sandwiches all day long like he smells like cured meats and he goes for walks with the elderly on the weekend it's like like Barber Listen is to just goo such goo a <laughs> goo goo dolls. yeah yeah he takes him for walks he's got the ghetto blaster with the goo goo dolls like, like Barber's <laughs> just such a weird guy man like Jesus Christ Pavel Barber is listening funny, like wake up buddy yeah and apparently although me there too, is one I was there as well <laughs> although if there is one one thing I will give Barb's you know props for is that he does use butt ends so he's at least doing something right does he <laughs> yeah he does he's a butt ends guy and he's also. As uh, questionable as his hockey ability is, he does. He, he's created a whole. He's created a whole brand for himself. You know, I don't even. Mm -hmm. So I can't hate, hate too much. He's got the. But you know what he doesn't have? The fucking loyal following that you have. Well, I mean, oh, like, too. the guy just reposts stick handling cuts and stick handling dangles. Like it's genius if you think about it. You use some nasty dangle in like the UHL or the KHL or whatever. And yeah. repost that, get some views, people see it, they follow you, and then now they're following you, unload the dog shit. Unload me stick counting on some lake in Ontario or whatever, yeah. and tell them how awesome I let Check out the life of Pavel Barber. I'm going to sit at my yeah. PC, and I'm just going to edit videos all day with my cup of tea and my dog in my dump apartment in Toronto. <laughs> it's uh, the life it's, of Pavel Barber. I'm a midget actually, as well. You guys had a very similar start, dude. He was yeah. reposting dangles. You were making highlights, eh? But he's still doing it. I, I quit doing that like six years ago. Yeah, still you started. <laughs> you started. You committed to the vlog. Yeah, I committed yeah, to the vlog. The, you, you like know, the vlog actually, life. on that topic, I, you wanted to talk about it last week. We just missed it. You want to talk about that uh, Deniskin, the the banana peel thing in the UHL? Yeah, actually, he was my my fine of the week or beef of the week. I, I saw that in your vlog. <laughs> in yeah, my just vlog. giving people a heads up. That came out literally like 20 minutes after we filmed last yeah. week's podcast. Like Pat texted me, he's like, "Oh, we missed it." So we, yeah, we'll, we'll we catch up on it this week. Yeah. Do so you want to start off? Yeah, I actually I was kind of like joking, but I actually when I first saw it, I did think he was like 
doing something like like eat my or like suck my thing i was like what are like what where are people getting other people really that mad about it then i kind of realized I'm like oh he's peeling a banana and then i like scroll down the comments i'm like oh he's doing a racial thing here yes so, i mean people were in an uproar rightfully so i mean that was just i mean stupid I, especially it's like you know everything that's happened in like the last two years like does that guy like like i don't know what was going through his head like whatever obviously an idiot but i think the the league this is so actually this is kind of a oh bizarre thing that came that came out of it the suspension so the, well the suspension one right so it was like i guess someone commented on my video that they messed up like the social media guy messed up it was actually a 13 game suspension like he couldn't buy back the games or whatever but even still pretty low suspension the the guy he did it towards is taking a stand he mm -hmm. was like no i'm done i'm not playing until this is like fixed like this guy should be kicked out of the league there's no place for that whatever blah 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 and he's taking a stand and apparently i don't know i can't confirm this but someone and they said they weren't lying said that this guy now might get an ahl deal you know what like good for this guy like he played in the in the ahl i think not too long uh -huh. ago so obviously he's a good player he played in the ohl for i believe flint i could be wrong jalen smirk yeah. smirk whatever his name is i know i'm messing that up um po power move absolutely but at the same time like i when i saw that i was like okay i don't, I don't think this guy is gonna have the balls to stick to because like, they're not getting paid a lot of money in you know in the yeah. ukraine league so and also like he's not like you or i where there's a podcast or a vlog paying his bills so if he's sitting out <laughs> Like, like he's losing money, right? For sure. Also, any team that picks him up, what a great PR move. Like if you're, mm -hmm. let's say you're the Manitoba Moose, the Jacksonville Iceman, the, you know, San Diego Gulls, like what a PR move to pick this guy up and, and uh, give him an opportunity. But, you know, the thing that, that I, I swear to God, nobody understands this is that North America culturally is so much more different than like Europe and Asia. So like this cancel culture, this... Um, like like this woke society that that you and I are both very familiar with in North America, it doesn't exist here. Like like the guy that that did it, uh, the uh -huh. uh, Deniskin guy with, with the and and by the way, for those listening, I know my dad probably doesn't know what's going on. So this guy, this Russian guy playing in the Ukraine hockey league, basically they were having some altercation between him and a black guy, and he basically ended up peeling a banana or doing the imitation of peeling a banana and telling him basically like you're a monkey. Fuck off, yeah. you know, I, I don't know what the, the message he was trying to get across was, but all I know is banana peeling, monkey, racist, black joke, right? But this this woke um, this woke culture of cancel culture, it doesn't exist uh, as much mm -hmm. in, in Europe and in Asia. And these guys in Russia, they're not aware of this, right? The guys are Russian, so the guy probably didn't think anything was wrong. And also, um, like this league... Which is bizarre. Like they, that yeah, like the like, whole NHL is coming out, you know, trying to attack this guy and attack the league, and, and rightfully so. Like, the, the, there shouldn't be any racism in hockey, like this kind of stuff. But they're also not paying the league's bills. They're not paying this guy's bills. So I, I, I completely yeah. understand why the league would come out and say, I don't, I don't care that you want us to ban this guy for life and to fold the league and do all these ridiculous things. Nobody's paying our bills. Like, you guys aren't paying our bills, which I understand right. that as well. The... Um, it just you know it's it that's it it's a tough it's a tough situation because it's also like in the league it's like yes this guy is clearly a fucking idiot like what are you doing but One, my but big then it's problem like, is okay, okay, sorry my, my big problem is what is this the best this guy can come up with like okay you're in a scrum you know like pat and i talked about this things get heated you say you say some stuff like like uh in in life you say things that are heated but you get down to the nitty-gritty and you're you're so unintelligent Right. This is what I think isn't being talked about enough. You're so unintelligent and so uneducated yeah. that you have to go to the bottom of the barrel and pull out a racist black monkey banana peeling joke. This is what yeah, you go for. That's pretty low. You, like you don't go like, listen, there's a learn to skate on Saturday at 1230. I will personally drive you here if you show up. I'd like to help you. Like, let's let's go for the skill sets here or tell them that you're ugly. Your mother doesn't even love you. You're so ugly. Or just just something along those lines. You pull out the racist black joke. And I get it. it. It's an like, uh, it's clearly an unintelligent human. Like it's yeah, just an, a idiot. Very unintelligent. He's an idiot of a human. It's like, oh yeah. Like that that's literally your like you have no better joke or chirp or say at the guy that you're you're going there. And it's like, okay, like ha, huh, like funny? No, it wasn't. It was just idiotic. It was stupid. And obviously this put people in an in an uproar. But uh yeah. But it kind of ridiculous. 
hopefully the the guy he did it towards hopefully he does get it get something better out of it you know maybe if they the ahl says like okay let's get him in a better Mm -hmm. place better situation so he doesn't have to deal with shit like that like if that's you know still a thing over there that's i don't know you know hopefully he does get in a better situation uh could you imagine if he did have a vlog oh he he could post that like then he's going on strike on vlog dude guys strike vlog I, I, dude, honest to God, I, I wish I had that kind of an opportunity to like have a viral moment like that. And, and I know they say, careful what you wish for. I would give it a lot to have a viral moment like that where I'm on, on the good end, not the bad end, obviously. And to, to make, to make a big thing about it and, and create some awareness for, you know, like, let's get racism out of hockey. I know, I know for whatever reason, the, the internet thinks that, that I'm super racist and, and I think racism belongs. No, racism does not belong in hockey. I think we need to look at the under, the underlying issue of this is the best that this guy could come up with. Like, come on. Like, can we not educate this guy on like how to chirp properly? That, that there is bigger issues here as well, um, and and not even necessarily the guy himself. Like his parents. Like I, I don't blame the guy for making the banana joke. That's his parents who raised him like that. The parents are the problem. You know what I mean? Like, would you agree? Yeah, but then at a, it, yes, but at a certain age, it's like you gotta you become your own person, and you can realize Absolutely. like, oh, that's wrong. You know, so that's that's him. Be, that's an idiot. That's a that's that's someone who never grew like that's just okay. an idiotic person no so maybe i'm wrong here maybe i'm maybe i'm a little bit well, in the wrong like yes initially it's like his parents influence for sure you're not just taught like you're taught that behavior but then at a certain age like you start making your own choices yeah i i would just say more so like from a young age you're either taught that it's okay to start dropping n-bombs or you're it's not to make fun of yeah. you know chinese people to make fun of white for people sure. to make fun of like it's either installing you or instilling you as a foundation or it's not um, yeah, you become your own man, absolutely. You become your own person, and you make those choices that you have to live with, but your parents set you up uh, with that yeah, foundation yeah, yeah. for life, man. So, yeah. um, I don't know. I've, I've well, never been a part of that. You know, I've, I've, I I don't think I've ever played with a with a black... I know, have I played with a black really? guy? I think i played with one black guy. I, I don't think I've played with many of them. Um, one? No, sorry, two. One guy in English River when I played Junior A and one guy in AAA, and never was there ever any racist issues. I think these are very... I know people say racism needs to go, but like I, I think it's a very isolated I issue. I don't think there's many of these issues out there. I really don't. I've played with like I had um black guy on my main team and at KUA. I never experienced any. I mm-hmm. now they might say different, like I don't know their small talk on the ice, you know what I mean? I didn't see anything where someone made a comment to them. So mm-hmm. I think, you know, yes, it's on its way. It's on its way. It's out. I did do. Uh, I worked with um, a guy in uh, November when I was in Minnesota last year, yep. and he used to play pro hockey. He was a black guy, and he said when he was playing in the '90s, there would be people straight up calling him the N word, and like saying like "Get off the ice. You don't belong here." Essentially, and he said like even his own teammates, when there was a black guy on the other team, his own teammates would be saying shit to them, and he'd be like guys like come on what the fuck and they're like oh no like it's it's, it's not not you you know he's on the other team and like, he's like it's the other guy <laughs> like, he's like no like no that's not how it works like so like even in the 90s like it was still apparently like like that but so you're not seeing that today which is no. a good which is a good thing so right um, direction i guess speaking of things changing um to, to kind of shift gears here i i had a thought the other day on the bus was that um just, just real quickly, like, have, have, how many real jobs have you worked? Have you worked a, a real job yet? I don't mean for that to come across as, like, well, condescending. Depends, but like, it depends on what you consider a real job. Just a, a job where you show up and you get paid, you, you know, like, real simple. I, I did, um, like, I, I worked at, like, hockey skills, like, practices. Like, I, I would go for, like, the hour, work okay. the skills and go. But other than that, I would just do Uber, Lyft. DoorDash, okay. all that shit. Perfect. Um, so I, I was thinking to myself the other day, like things have obviously like COVID has changed so much in this world. Um, like I, I worked a lot of like minimum wage jobs, like in kitchens and bakeries, like out of out of high school. And I remember so many times where like I'd call in and be like, you know, boss, I'm not feeling so good. Like I, I'm sick, dude. Like I don't want to come. And he's like, well, who's going to fill your shift? Like some, you know what I mean? Like somebody's got to start yeah. the breads for the day. Somebody's got to start the kitchen off and, and get the restaurant open. Like, and it ain't me coming in. So like, oh, okay, well, I guess I'll come in then. Um, and I thought to myself, 
after COVID, those days are done, man. Like the days of I feel sick. Oh, you better come in. Somebody's got those are never happening again. If you so much as tell your boss, oh, I got a sniffle. Stay home. Do not come yeah. in today. Like those those days. If you ever want a day off, I got a cough. Got a All fever. you have to say. Yep, I'm not feeling so. Like, like my woman had a. Uh, That's a perk now. <laughs> my, I, I believe she went through this. But my woman had an exam the other day. She did not study for it at all. Emails the professor the morning of. Ah, oh, you know, I got a sore throat. I got a, you know, sore. You know, I got a cough, a fever, headache. I might have COVID-like symptoms. Stay home. Don't, don't even come yeah. within five kilometers of the building. And now yeah. her exam has been, you know, postponed for like a week for her, which gives her more time to study. But I'm like, man, like what a. You know what I mean? Like, if you don't want to come into yeah. work, just, oh, I, I'm not feeling so hot today, man. I, school, I'm going to stay home. School, too, dude. Like, when you were Same a kid, thing. we had to put on a fucking show when you're waking up. Like, oh, like, I don't feel good. You know, oh, you can suck it up for the day now. No, all you have to be like is like, I, oh, dude. I, think, I, got a, I think I got a little sniffle. I sneezed today. You're like, whoa, whoa. Go go get four vaccine shots and go to your room and then stay there and put a mask on. Like You know what I mean? Like, you're not going, oh, fuck. You're, you get a free pass out of school, out of work, et cetera, dude. Yeah, when you come back, get that fifth dose while you're at it, kid. Thanks for coming. Collect that $100 per dose. <laughs> dude, I, I took a lot of pride as a kid going to school that I did not miss any time. Listen, I didn't do very well in school. I passed with 60s and 70s everywhere I went, but I took pride that nothing was going to stop me from showing up. And le- unless something absolutely ridiculous popped up, I was not missing a day. And I, I had multiple years of school, elementary and even in high school. Where, well, actually, maybe not high school. High school is when that kind of changed. But in elementary from my grades, kindergarten to eight, not many days were missed. I can probably count on one hand how many days I missed because I was a trooper and I was relentless. Oh. Didn't matter what was happening. I was showing up the next day. To work or school? Oh, school. I was not working at, in grade eight. Bro, I, did not. I, I took so many fake sick days. I hated school. Oh. My my mom knew it. she didn't give a shit. If I I would go to school for whatever amount of weeks, and then I'd be like, you know what? Nope, not feeling it this week. I would I would be sick for four days. I would I would literally miss Monday through Thursday. <laughs> oh man! <laughs> Every time I was sick, I would have like a week off, dude. I was, I was chilling. I love I love doing it. Self made vacation great. time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know, I take a paid it leave. Gets old, bro. Fucking school, same bullshit. I had to. Nah. Not to get, uh, I guess, too political on, on this, but, like, I, I feel like school just does not, like, the school systems, and, and keep in mind, I haven't been in a high school in, what are we, 2021, 20, so almost 10 years. Like, wow. the school system does not set up people for success in the real world like this, like, uh, no. slap on the wrist society, make sure you show up. If you do something wrong, we're going to send you to another room or we'll bring it back. There's no consequences for what you do or whatever, like, um, no, just school's a, a bunch of bullshit. Oh, dude. It, it, they say school's a measuring stick to life. No, it's the best four years of your life before life starts because you have no accountability. You get away with whatever you want. You want to do yeah. anything. Anything there's goes. A, there's a lot of that, and there's also a lot of just, like, misleading thing. Like, they they, they want you to create that one path, too. It's like, yeah. if you're not doing this, you're wrong. Like, if you're not going to get trying to get a desk job, how are you going to work? How are you gonna, you're, not, you're doing it wrong. But actually, what you're... 20, I, don't know, I graduated in 2014. I so actually, I'm six. So you would have been 15. Here's here's an example of, of what I like. I'm saying here. When I was a sophomore in high school, so I was 15. So I'm yep. a year away from this. I'm 15. I'm in a study hall. I'm just goofing around. With my friend, because we're in a study hall. You have to have silent study hall. They would say. Oh, so we're, we're just goofing off, you know, doing homework. No, we're just fucking around with it. We're in a computer lab for this study hall, so we're all just talking, laughing. And this lady just starts yelling at us. She's like, you you doofuses, like, like, uh, like pretty much calling us stupid. Like, she starts yelling at us. She's like, what do you like? What do you think you're going to be doing in 10 years? Like, like calling us idiots. Like, where do you think you're going to be in 10 years? And I remember 15-year-old me was like, I think I said something like, you know, like, well, I, th- I think if I'm not an underwear model... <laughs> Because oh, I had boy. a lifelong goal of being an underwear model to be like Mark Mark Wahlberg. You kind of have all... been though. You've kind of done that on YouTube and on Instagram. Yeah, so technically, yeah, you, you know, you fulfilled that. Yeah, <laughs> by myself. Kind of. yeah. And uh, all I have so to do is boy. take a picture in sheath, and I'm good. Or there manscaped, you go, baby. I'm chilling. But uh, sheath underwear, manscaped lawnmower, baby. Let's I go. said, I said, I was like, I'll I'll be playing hockey, and she looked at me and she goes, "You're not gonna be playing hockey in ten years. Let me let you in on a little secret. Oh, You're not gonna be playing hockey up, in ten fuck. years." So, I'm a year away from that. 
essentially I'm 10 years from that. Like I'm nine years from that and I'm still playing hockey. So first of all, go fuck yourself to that teacher. Miss Mullins. <laughs> and, and I'm not saying, I'm not saying every 15 year old kid is going to, you know, go on and be a D one hockey player and, uh, and, uh, go on to play profit. But it's like, what do you, how, how she knows nothing about me. You know what I mean? She knew nothing about me. And she's telling me essentially like, oh, you know what? Give up on your dream. You're not going to do that. Like, shut the fuck up. If I was a weaker minded kid, I might have believed her, you know? But no, I like, fuck you. You are know we, nothing about me. Are we, are we going to get into this? Is this going to be our yeah. final topic of the day? Because we could go for an hour on this. Yeah, okay. let's do it. You got more on <laughs> So uh, my mom is a teacher, okay? So yeah. my, my, my dad's listening. My, my dad's like gathered up by the speaker. He's like, yes. <laughs> Yes, tell me how much of a better parent I am than your mother. <laughs> but the, these teachers, and, and keeping in mind, I haven't been in school for about 10 years in the high school education yeah, yeah. system. I, I did two years in university, but I haven't been in that environment about 10 years. So I'm sure a lot has changed. It's got to be even softer. But there's a certain mentality and a certain personality type that it takes to be a teacher. Like You, you can't be somebody like me or Pat being a teacher. Like I could never be a teacher because I'd kill somebody. I I just literally I don't have the patience for children, and you would I'd be on the news I'd be the next Brian Laundry I'm telling you right now, and I probably shouldn't be telling you this, but I'm telling you for fact I don't have patience for these kids, and this personality type of teachers is you're gonna do as the man tells you right yeah sit down shut up take your next check on the first and fifteenth and do as you're told, nothing you say matters the only thing that matters is what the superintendent tells you and you'll like it whether you like it or not. So they buy into this mentality of, of what the man says. So what do you do? You got to get the kid from kindergarten to grade 12. You got to graduate him, send him out the door to university, finish their degree, get a job. And the problem with that is that these are closed-minded people that aren't thinking outside of the box. And I don't want to say ahead of the game because ahead of the game is open to um, yeah. interpretations. Right? For example, and I'd like to think that Pat and I are on very similar pages. We're very entrepreneurial-minded. We're outside the box yeah. thinking. I'm not thinking of who can I work for to make my next buck. I'm thinking of how can I take the game, put it back in my yeah. control, and make my next buck on my own time, on my own dime, making my next vlog, our next sponsorship, our next podcast, our next you know sheath par partnership, our next Manscaped sponsorship, right? putting the game back in my control. And these people don't see that. So whenever, and my dad's going to love this, anytime I have an idea that I think is a little bit out there, a little, little bit maybe too crazy, I call my mom. And I tell my mom this idea. I say, Mom, what do you think about this? And if she thinks I'm nuts, I know I'm onto something. If she likes it, okay, it's not crazy enough. I got to go back to the drawing board because that's the mentality behind a lot of this stuff. You got to think outside the box. Yep. This this plain Jane level of thinking. Like my my last girlfriend that that I dated for God, was it was it two years? Yeah, it was two years. It's been a while. Um, she came from a small town, and her parents were of the same mentality of like, you go to you know, you go to high school, you go to university, graduate, you get a job, you punch out for th after thirty five years, you have a couple of kids, you carry on. Mm -hmm. And I, I remember, um, so she moved with me to Vancouver Island when I played college there, and we came back, and you know, her and I went for dinner with her parents, and you know, we're, we're regrouping and recapping like the year and whatnot. And oh, Travis, what are you, uh, what are you and uh, Bailey going to be doing for uh, next year? I'm like, well, uh, Mr. W. Uh, I de-enrolled in school, uh, and your daughter has done the same thing. Uh, I'm not going back to the same university or the same school that we spent last year at. The credits don't mean anything anymore. I'm going to be trying to do a pro tryout in Columbus, Georgia. Columbus, Ohio? Nope, Columbus, Georgia, the murder capital <laughs> of the U.S. And uh, your daughter is going to be doing an internship where she doesn't get paid, and she's going to hope to get paid. Um, and uh, yeah, and the look that her mother gave me, just looking deep into my soul of, you failure, this is not how life works. Yeah. You work 35 years for the man and you punch out. That yeah. is the type of mentality that does not work well for what you and I do. And our mentality yeah. does not work well for what they do. So, no, um, I, unfortunately you, too, it's a lot of people's mindset. And a lot it of gets propaganda, tough. man. A lot of it propaganda. It, it, especially when you're in that community, like it gets hard because you're, you're, they don't think like you, you're not like, no, them. it sucks too. Cause Actually, I, I just watched a TikTok last night, late last night, of Stan Lee. Do you know who Stan Lee is? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Creator of Spider-Man or a lot yeah, of other yeah. heroes. But his Spider-Man story is that, like, he brought it in with this crazy cool idea. They like, come up with a new superhero. He, like, sees a fly on the wall and blah, blah, blah. Gets this whole crazy cool idea. Storyline goes in. They're like, this is the stupidest idea you've ever had. Like, what the fuck are you talking about? Get out of here. He, like, snuck it on a 
cover um, on a magazine and fast forward time, all of a sudden people saw him and they're like, wait, this is great. And then he's like, hey, Stan, remember that idea that we both loved, blah, blah, blah. Like, we're going to make a series out of it, Spider-Man. So it's like what his point was, was like, if you truly believe in something like that, like don't let some idiot tell you tell you that it's, you know, that it's bad or that it's wrong or you can't do it. And But then he also says like that doesn't mean every – idea or thing that you have is a great genius idea but it's it's more of like you know when something mm-hmm. you know you have that feeling like some people are, it's fake they don't even believe it they're just saying like they're saying oh yeah this is you know it's a good idea but they're, they're not putting like a work ethic into it or anything you know what i mean like we're in my example it's like hockey something that i had put in my whole entire life to i've dedicated it i was playing with guys that were already committed d1 you know what i mean like i knew I had a pretty good feeling that I was going to end up D1 somehow, some way. Mm -hmm. So when that teacher says that to me, I'm just like, you know, like, fuck you. I'm not going to let you tell me that. Well, And and also, too, like, what do you know about doing things in life? You sold out to the man. You went and got a job. Was she a teacher or was she an EA? Because at the time. She she was a teacher, math teacher, maybe. So being a teacher, you got to get an education. At the time when my mom got hired for an educational assistant, you didn't even need an education. You just applied, yeah. got the job. So that person telling you that you don't know what you're talking about, you're not going to yeah. play hockey, you need to get a real job. What have you done? You haven't done shit in your life. You sold out to the man, got a job as a teacher, you're making salary for the yeah, next 35 it's... years, you're unionized. We are thinking outside of the box here, okay? It's a different, it's a different mindset. It's a, it's a different mindset, and there's no there's nothing wrong with having that different mindset. Like, yeah. my mother and I don't see eye to eye on a lot of things. I still love her. I still call her, you know, three, four, or five times a week to let her know how I'm doing, to see what she's up to, and, and let her know that, hey, you birthed me. I fucking love you. Same thing with my dad. Hey, listen, we don't see eye to eye on some things. I, my, my dad and I see eye to eye on a lot more things, obviously. Yeah. Go figure. But uh, yeah, that's a part of life. We can we can disagree yeah. on a lot of things, but we don't have to have a hate. And that's, that's one thing that I like to preach, especially in the comment section for my videos you don't have to agree with me on everything you don't have to agree with everything out there but we can be respectful and civil yeah 100 yeah, percent. right but yeah, uh but also too like i mean they might fucking love what they do they're teaching and they might be happy and that's awesome but that makes you happy that's their that, that's like us saying like if you're not a youtuber you're an idiot <laughs> like you know what i mean like that no it's stupid that's it's it would be yeah. ridiculous it's not, not. It's not for everyone. So they. It's just, it's unfortunate that some or a lot of them, not all of them, but a lot of them have that very narrow-minded view on life because they they think that that's how it has to be. They didn't, you know, maybe live out that childhood dream that they had. You know, so they're pissed they off that you're been. doing it. And they're like, oh, it's unrealistic. It's stupid that you think that way. Because what are the chances of you actually doing that? So they think that way. They have that very. So, but like, then you have people like us who are just stubbornly optimistic. Maybe people would think is idiotic, but that's so. It's, I don't know. It's a it's a tough thing. You're not going to see eye to eye. But. You're trying different things. Like I, yeah. I, I feel like these liberal ass people see one way and one way only. It's yeah. my way or the highway. But like, the the non liberal people of the world see a little bit more open minded. And again, liberal, non liberal, whatever, yeah. whatever way you see the world, whatever makes you happy. I'm here to support you. But we're also here to sell you an awesome lawnmower for Manscaped. <laughs> we're going to keep you light on your feet. You're going to keep you shaving. You're going to have a great date night this holiday season, this Halloween season, whatever you want. And we're going to keep you wearing sheath, keeping fresh. You're going to be cooled down all year long. Pat and myself, want to thank you for listening to the podcast. We do a new episode every Thursday, 8 a.m. Eastern, 7 a.m. Winnipeg time, 5 a.m. Pacific time, and then 2 p.m. in Sweden. The video version's on YouTube, Sling on the Biscuit YouTube channel. The audio version, Apple, Spotify, Stitcher, any of those other weird Google podcast platforms. We want to thank you for being a part of the podcast and joining us as always. If you're still listening, actually, no, you are still listening because you're still listening yes. to the podcast. <laughs> Pat, any final words before we cap off? Hey, I mean, if you're listening this, uh, this deep in, thank you. You guys are you know like the motivation for us to keep doing a podcast you guys are the real ones uh yeah. we appreciate you even if you're not you know getting a lawnmower or whatever the fact that you're listening to us just supporting us it's it means a lot so thank you guys you're the shit everyone who xed out already fuck them <laughs> fuck you guys and they're not gonna Cask even hear this so they won't know <laughs> Yeah, but like, and, and here's the thing: you. you don't need to buy a lawnmower. If you got a couple bucks to lie around, pick one up. We really appreciate it. Just the fact yeah. you're listening, that's more than enough for us. Yeah. And we want to thank you, and we will see you on Thursday. Thanks for listening and watching. Peace. I gotta take a dump. <laughs>